Today we're going to talk about cold sores. This is a very common thing. Um, it goes by different names as you can see here. Uh, this is not to be confused with the picture that you're going to see next is actostomatitis. Now here's a table that shows some differences between the two and also some similarities. Now cold sores, some things about that, usually they start off as blisters, whereas canker sores usually there is a white grayish center. The other big difference is a lot of times the cold sores happen on the outside of the mouth and the nose and all that, whereas the actostomatitis happen inside the mouth. Now, if you're someone who suffers from cold sores, you know exactly these different symptoms you see here. A lot of people will have kind of the malaise, just kind of feeling icky before it happens, and sometimes even fevers. And then, boom, the blisters hit. And they can be very, very painful. It's important to note that cold sores are most commonly caused by herpes simplex virus 1. But there is a herpes simplex virus 2, which we'll talk about later. Now let's talk about some quick facts about HSV-1. Now, herpes simplex virus can appear anywhere on the face, but most often they happen in the lips. They usually heal approximately in 8 to 10 days, somewhere around there. Once you have this in your system, which most people do, um, they, this is a lifelong infection. Um, most people who have it don't have any symptoms, however. And the virus basically remains dormant in the nerves. Now, 50 to 67% of the population has HSV-1. Wow, that's a lot, right? Well, it just, a lot of people don't, they don't show symptoms. Now, the important thing to note is that orals, uh, oral herpes can spread to the genital areas as well. Uh, so, typically when we think of genital herpes, that's usually typically caused from HSV-2. Now, usually these, this can be confirmed with a viral culture like a PCR, and that's one of the best ways to do it, but there are other ways as well. I wanted to show some comparisons between uh, herpes simplex virus 1 and herpes simplex virus 2. Now, usually type 1, you're going to see it likes to hang out in the mouth and the lip area, and then type 2, more in the genital area, although either one can cross over to the other side, believe it or not. And we're actually seeing more outbreaks of HSV-1 actually happen into the genital area, and that usually happens from any kind of oral sex or any kind of contact like that. Now, the recurrence of genital herpes is less likely from the uh, less likely due to the HSV type 1 and usually more the outbreaks of the genital herpes is um, more frequent in HSV 2. So that's important to note. Now let's talk about how HSV 1 herpes simplex virus 1 is spread. Now obvious one kissing is a big one, sharing utensils, sharing drinks, the important thing to remember um, that HSV-1 usually happens on the lips and the mouth, and HSV-2 usually the genitals, although they can swap places. That's important to remember. Now let's talk about some precipitating factors. Uh, some of the ones that are really common, stress, trauma, hormonal changes like period, sun exposure, and illness. And finally, let's talk about some treatment options. Now, over-the-counter topicals is something that's pretty popular. Lysine is actually something that I really like. It's actually up and coming. There's some thought that lysine actually helps to, re to prevent replication of the herpes simplex virus. And then, of course, a lot of people actually are on um, antivirals like acyclovir, well, everyone, thanks for watching. This ends this video, and be sure to subscribe for more educational videos from MedMadeEasy.